Hello there! How's it going? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we're checking out Brown Dust 2. This is a new gacha game that came out just a few days ago, and I tried it out on stream. So I'm gonna give my opinion regarding this game on this video. First off, this is a gacha game. Who would have guessed it? With a heavy focus on storytelling and narrative. I didn't try out much of the story outside of the tutorial, but I did enjoy it, and I did find it to be fun and lighthearted. Now, it did seem to turn a bit darker on the next story, but even then, I wouldn't necessarily call it dark, and it seems that the theme of this game's narrative is going to be mostly fun and lighthearted, which, to my surprise, was done pretty well. Another thing to note regarding its narrative is that there is no main character. While the tutorial may give you the impression of you being the leader, leader of a mercenary group, the story doesn't really resolve around you, and instead each separate story will focus on individual characters. This of course does mean that writers will have a more creative freedom since they're not tied to having to write every single story resolving around one singular main character, and also allows for characters to end up more fleshed out since the story can focus on them instead of, you know, focusing on placeholder gacha MC. Now, I would say the story and narrative-wise, it's a W. It's refreshing to see a gacha game actually put their focus on the gacha characters instead of on the MC character that no one cares about. As for gameplay, I'm not entirely sure if the gameplay has a genre, but I'll describe it as best as I can. It's a tactical RPG turn-based grid combat. Essentially, when combat starts, enemies and allies are placed in two different grids facing each other. Each turn, you select what your characters will do, where they'll do it, and in which order they'll do it. And then you'll press next turn. This will play out your character's moves first, and then the enemy's moves. Plan out your turn well, and you can deliver devastating combos where you push enemies into each other to allow your next AoE attack to be even more effective. Positioning is also super important, since characters will naturally be more often hit if they are in the front. So. Don't be like me and keep your squishy units in the back. As for abilities, it gets a bit more complicated without explaining other aspects of the game, but essentially each unit has a minimum of three moves. Their basic attack, a push mechanic, which can be different per unit, and an ultimate so to say. Now the basic attack is exactly what it is. It is a basic attack. Your unit will attack the first character in front of them. If there's no character in front of them, they will simply move to the next row and attack the first character of that row. As for the push mechanic, depending on which unit you are using, the push mechanic will either push them backwards, to the side, or may even push them to completely different directions. As for the ultimates, well, these ultimates will cost you little points down in the bar below and will punish each turn. Ultimates also have a cooldown, so you can spam one really strong ultimate over and over again. Finally, characters can have more than one ultimate. As for how you can increase the number of ultimates at your disposal, well, this is where we head to the next part, the gacha. So there are two gachas in this game. You have your costume gacha, and you have your equipment gacha. I don't care about equipment gacha. Never have, and I sure as hell ain't gonna start now. So what about this costume gacha? Well, first off, it's called Costume Gacha, but you are getting the character, so don't worry. Essentially, whenever you unlock a new costume, you will get the character corresponding to that costume. Which sounds right. Well, no. This is where I would say this game's gacha starts immediately show its ugly side. First off, let's say that you get two costumes for the same character. How do you decide which one is better? Well, don't worry, because you don't have to pick. Instead, the character simply gained a new ultimate, because costumes are literally only ultimates. I'm not even joking. The only thing these costumes provide is a new button. But wait, what about stats and abilities? Nope, only ultimate. But I mean, at least you get a new visual for the character. Correct, unless you use another ultimate in the fight, which will cause the character to immediately switch to that ultimate's costume. God damn it, game, I want big titty corrupted waifu. If I wanted white knight waifu, I would start the fight with white knight waifu. Now, this in itself isn't actually that much of an issue. And while it did confuse me a little as to why my characters kept changing their visuals, I actually do think it's neat that these costumes do power up your favorite characters by merely having them. My only issue is that that's all they do. Getting a 5 star feels quite worse when you realize all it did was add an extra button to your unit. But wait, it gets worse, because this game has one of the strongest presentations I've seen in a while, and at the same time, one of its biggest disappointments. And that is, the skill cutscenes. <laughs> Get it!
So these ultimates have cutscenes when you use them. Now, this isn't really anything new. Loads of games have cutscenes for their ultimates, and as it turns out, cutscenes for ultimates are generally a net positive for a game if they're done well. And Brown Dust 2 cutscenes are out of this world. When I first saw them, I did a double take. I was not expecting it, because while the game graphically looks amazing, it has a retro gaming style to it. So when the fully drawn animated cutscenes play out for the first time, it is spectacular. It is the selling point of this game, in my opinion. Huh? Oh my god. What is that animation? So, how could this amazing animated cutscene ever disappoint? Yes, yeah, so um, most characters don't have any. Only the base characters that you encounter in the early story have them. Allow me to explain. You watch the cutscenes for the first time, coming out from a three-star unit. You check out all the story character cutscenes, which are all three-star units. You get hyped. Oh man, I can't wait to get a super cool waifu from the gacha and checking out where the cutscene is. You gotcha. You get three five stars because the gacha gods have blessed you. You go into combat to check out their cutscenes. And not a single one has one. Not just the five stars. Not a single one of the characters that you got from the gacha, regardless of their rarity, has a cutscene. This little shit here has a cutscene because it's in the story. But none of these have them? There's no way they would do that. But no, that's what we have. And what baffled me the most is how I couldn't find anything online about it. I spent half an hour in stream, Googling, YouTubing, looking for anyone talking about the cutscenes because I couldn't find anything. And I just thought there was something I did wrong. Maybe I did something wrong in the settings. Maybe I turned them off. I don't know. Something's not working here. It was only when chat told me that, yeah, most don't have a cutscene that I realized what was going on. Now, I have done some research in the meantime, and from what I can tell, it does seem like they want to add cutscenes to every character, but it's a work in progress. But to be fair, I don't care. The game is officially out. And you're telling me it's still a work in progress? Then get it back in the oven, because this shit is raw. Like, I'm not gonna miss here. Gameplay is good, story is good, graphics are good. I only have positive things to say, except for the cutscenes. Can you imagine if other games like Genshin Impact, FGO, Epic 7, Nikkei, Honkai Star Rail, etc., etc., were all officially released, where only a handful of characters have animations, and then they release banners with characters with missing animations? Can you imagine that? Because that's what Brown Dust 2 is doing. First impressions matter. And when you see all the cool and tasteful cutscenes show up in the story, and then you gotcha, you get the five star, and you find out that it's all a lie, and the five star doesn't have an animation, but a random free star that happened to be in the story has a cool animation, the disappointment becomes immeasurable. If you enjoy the gameplay, if you enjoy the story, the characters and the graphics, good for you. I also like them. But I cannot in good conscience recommend a game that is incomplete at full release. I don't care if this is the new standard of modern games. I don't care if they need money to get it done. I don't care if it might turn better in the future. I'm not gonna recommend you to eat a raw fucking game. This game needs to go back into the oven get the cutscenes sorted out, and then come back actually complete, because this game has potential to be a great gacha game. But not in its current form. One, two, three, four, oh wait, no, not four yet. Four, five, uh, 